Well, as Queenslanders are forced to deal with the escalating impact of youth crime, a senior member of the Palaszczuk government has dismissed the crisis as a media beat-up. Got to tell you, made my blood boil yesterday. In a post to social media, Queensland MP Don Brown wrote, Want proof youth crime is a media beat-up? Channel 9's second lead story was about a bloke not getting robbed. It's a slap in the face for Russell and Anne Field, who lost their son Matthew and his pregnant fiancée Kate to a youth offender in 2021. They join us now from Ely Beach in Queensland. Guys, thank you so much for being with us on what must have been a pretty torrid day for you yesterday. Now, how were you uh, after you heard all of this? Good morning. Good morning, Carl. So, look, it, it's a bit disappointing when you get somebody in a position like that coming out with comments and, you know, it, it's just ridiculous. The, the, obviously, um, it, he doesn't take note of what the community's talking to him about and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's to blame everybody else and, and say there's no, you know, juvenile crime issue is, is beyond a joke. Mm. It really is. And Russell and Nan, we, we've spoken to you guys extensively. We know the toll this has taken on you. We know how many other families have been affected by crime similar to this in Queensland. I mean, your son was killed in Don Brown's electorate. And do you feel forgotten Correct. by him? Correct. And, and, and we feel deeply... Um, uh, the comments that Don made uh, to us, we feel, is, is very offensive, um, saying there's... there's um, you know, the, the juvenile crime issue isn't there. Of course it's there. All he's got to do is open his eyes and walk around his community as, as, as well as the media. Um, you know, he came and stood on the corner with us and signed a petition, stood with us side by side. Um, and we thought, OK, you know, both parties, and I, I think from memory he stood with us and Chris, uh, David Christopher and the local mayor, Karen Williams, and, you know, we thought, oh, okay, there's a... A bit of a bipartisan agreement here that something's going to change, and then as soon as that time came, you know, he he sort of deserted the the, the cause, I suppose. But um, we every now and again he he may send us a message or whatever. But uh, the, these sort of comments are just beyond belief. He stood with you when Absolutely. when you when you needed it, right? He he signed the petition, and then suddenly, inexplicably. He's reversed his feeling on, on what matters most to you and what clearly matters most to the community. That's keeping things safe. Mm. It's beyond anything that I, could, I can comprehend. I don't get it. But for you, it must be a serious slap in the face. Well, well it is, and that's, that's the disappointing part. Like, yeah, he, he, this, this um, uh, Don Brown, he's the, 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 the sitting government's parliamentary whip. Now, for him to come out and say something like this... Um, obviously, he's, he's out of touch with the community, um, and apparently, from media reports, um, he's a bit of an out of, out of touch with the, with other members of his government. But um, yeah, we find it offensive to us. Other victims and families' victims will find their comments very, very offensive as well. And um, yeah, it, all he's going to do is walk around his community and showing pictures of, of a crime that didn't happen, but it, but it was would have if it was if it was the individual who broke into or stole the cars. Well, that's just showing what's happening every day of the week. No, no, you got. And there's victims uh, every day of the week. It's hundred percent right. And it's and for you as a mum, um, it, it makes my blood boil. I, I've said that. Um, but but for you as a mum, how is it? It's very hard. It brings everything back up again um, when you think you're trying to deal with it. It just brings everything up again, and it's just. Oh, just shocking. I, you think, you know, has this person got any brains? You know, where's his head? You know, in the sand or somewhere else? It's, you know, to have so, somebody saying things like that, it's just really, oh, it's just... You, know, you can't so get more offensive. No, and let's hope that Don is watching because what you're seeing right now is real heartache. What you two have experienced is utter devastation and for, it is so out of touch to then come out and say that it's a beat-up when there's actual real lives affected oh, by the crime we're seeing. It, it's not only us. There's other people in the community in the state as well that have been affected. Um, you, you know, this individual, I won't say this individual, Don Brown, you know, like I say, he, he is the local member for the area where Matt Kate might have killed. And, and he's seen it firsthand. He was there at the corner. Um, and from to say that, it just, it's just beyond the joke. But, mm. you know, all he's got to do is read the papers, you know, watch TV, whatever. But, you know, 
whether he was there for a photo opportunity, who knows? But, you know, when people come to the election next year, there's 93 state parliamentarians that need to be re-elected, no matter what side of the party mm. fence they're on. So, you know, people will vote with their... With their uh, sorry, uh, make, make their decision yeah. on why they mm. vote. Now, if they're happy with the system as it is now, by all means, sit on your hands and do nothing. But if you're not happy with the system that it is now and the laws and everything else with this, obviously it needs change. Something needs to be done. But if you're not happy with it now, make the decision at the polling booth. Mm. Uh, it's a sign. Uh, it's it's a sign of a of a government and those representatives inside that government who have lost touch with the very people who who they represent. Mm. There's there's never been right. a more standout case. We appreciate you being on. Sorry and, if you're paid when... again. No problem. Thanks very much, Carl. Thank, Sarah. You, Carl. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's uh, heartbreaking to hear that and just see the pain on their face yeah. all this time. All right, well, the Queensland opposition is calling on Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk to rethink the state's new youth crime laws. The changes have been widely slammed by justice reform experts who say the plan will only increase reoffending. Executive Director of the National Justice Reform Initiative, Dr Mindy Sotiri, uh, joins us now to discuss. Uh, good morning to you. Thanks for your time this morning. Good Appreciate morning. it. Um, talk us through your concerns about the new laws. Look, I think that what the Justice Reform Initiative has as the major concern is that prison doesn't work, jailing's failing. So we know that we've got decades of evidence that show us that despite the ambition of prison administrators for prison to be rehabilitative, for it to deter crime and ultimately for it to protect the community, what we know is that jailing is actually failing to do all of those things. And what we're seeing in Queensland with these new laws, with this sort of uh, ability to hold children legally in adult watch houses and adult uh, jails. What that means is that we're using the system that we already know is broken. We're responding to the question or the problem of overcrowding, not by looking at what the drivers of incarceration are, not by looking at what the drivers of crime are, but by a kind of band-aid solution. We also know that if we lock children up in places of detention that are meant for adults and in fact are already being criticised in terms of the harm that they cause, children are not going to leave those places mm. less likely to reoffend. They are going to leave those places much more likely to reoffend. We know it doesn't work to reduce crime. Uh, I mean, it is a big issue here. We're seeing a crime wave, not just in Queensland, but across the country. And, and the public is scared. They want action, right? This needs to be a multi-pronged approach. I mean, you look at Victoria, there's been a 34% reduction in youth crime reoffender rates there, 24% in New South Wales. What is it that Queensland's not doing right in your perspective? So Victoria, New South Wales, Tasmania, the ACT are actually all jurisdictions where there's been significant reductions in not just youth crime, but the numbers of children that are going to prison. Whereas in Queensland, we've seen the significant increase, more than 41% over the last couple of years. What those other jurisdictions are doing is looking at what the evidence actually says works in terms of reducing crime. But actually, more importantly, what we're seeing, especially in New South Wales and Victoria, which have historically had very politicised approaches to law and order, we've seen both sides of politics actually press pause on that highly politicised policy environment. That, that, that might be all well and good, but it's not working in Queensland. I've got zero... I've got no problem with these laws from a, from a personal um, opinion based on having lived in Queensland and knowing the people up there have had enough. Um, they're having their houses broke into in the middle of the night. I don't care if it's a 13, 14, 15-year-old, if they're re-offending and it's a serious crime. I, I just don't care. Um, so sure. the system is, is, is failing everyone. Um, but, but you have to stop the crime. Absolutely. And I think that none of this, none of us should be being soft on crime. Mm. I, I don't think anybody is saying that. But if we are looking at what actually works to reduce it, we actually need to look outside of prisons. We need to look outside of locking people up. We need to look at what the evidence actually says. And there's plenty of evidence around what actually does make a difference. And I think we've got some victims of crime who are patrons of the Justice Reform Initiative. And I spend quite a lot of time speaking with victims of crime. And I would never want to minimise what that experience is. But what a lot of victims of crime do say mm. is that they do not want what has happened to them to happen to other so people. What about, what about you send them to the bush? 
um, in, in the middle of nowhere in Queensland. Um, you re-educate them, you give them a purpose. Um, and then hopefully uh, they learn from people other than their gang leaders mm -hmm. that there is a path for them. I mean, something like that would 100% work, and I don't know why they haven't done it. Look, there are examples of what you'd call place-based approaches that absolutely have evidence that, that they reduce crime and that they uh, increase the likelihood of people not going back to prison. There are also alternatives at the point of policing, at the point of court, mm. at the point of prison itself, what happens when someone's in prison and post-release. Okay. Really yeah. good to talk to you. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much for being here. Really appreciate it. Allies of the Queensland Premier are this morning calling for a breath of fresh air, hoping Anastasia Palaszczuk quits the top job before the next election. Today, Queensland reporter Mia Glover is following the story for us this morning. Mia, the state's leadership appears to be hitting a ceiling. That's right, Brooke. Good morning again to you. That is a direct quote from members within the Queensland Labor Party. They're calling for Anastasia Palaszczuk to step down so a new leader can come in and give the role a bit more energy ahead of the state election next year. This all comes as, of course, Anastasia Palaszczuk jetted off on that two-week European holiday at the weekend following a tumultuous time in state parliament last week. But she's not the only person in the spotlight the this morning? No. So too is one of her MPs, Don Brown. He's in hot water this morning because he's labelled the youth crime crisis here in Queensland as a media beat up. He put up this on his Facebook page over the last few days saying, want proof that youth crime is a media beat up? Well, Channel 9's second lead story was about a bloke not getting robbed. The post has since been deleted, but what he was talking about is a yarn that was played by Nine News on Sunday night showing teens and kids armed with golf clubs jumping onto balconies, casing homes and cars. Nine News did speak to a homeowner who was terrified that these kids would come back and harm him with those golf clubs. But yesterday when Don Brown was confronted by Nine News, he doubled down on his comments. Non-robbery um, isn't genuine and is creating fear. There are still CCTV images of teenagers with golf clubs trying to break into a guy's house. Well, we need to make sure that we are alerting the community. And that's not a beat up. It is a beat up. Brooke, this is a slap in the face to the countless victims that we all know we've been putting up here on today's show who have lost loved ones to the youth crime crisis. They now want Don Brown to be sacked. All right. Thanks, Mia. Hey there, Today fans. Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my God. Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?